Welcome to TEDxU at LCJSMS 2017, Going Beyond. What is this a picture of? Well, in case you haven't figured it out, it's a classroom from 1917. And to the right is a classroom from the modern day. The point of me showing you this is that the way we educate students in America hasn't really changed much in the last 100 years. Furthermore, 65% of students in schools are visual learners, which means that traditional teaching methods that are still used today effectively reach less than half the class. I believe that in the next 10 years, virtual reality will change the way that we educate students in America. It will allow teachers to reach up to 100% of their class and provide a much more immersive learning experience. After this talk, you will become more versed in understanding this technology and will know how it can improve the way that we teach and learn. VR, or virtual reality, uses some type of screen to display two images, one for each eye, and put the user in a virtual world or environment. There are two types of VR, low-end and high-end. How many of you have used one of these? This is a Google Cardboard. It uses a phone to display two images, one for each eye, like any other headset, and put the user in a virtual world. One of the great things about Google Cardboard is it costs about $10, making it one of the cheapest options for VR. A downside, though, is because it uses a phone, it has less power to put on graphics, providing a much less immersive experience. Furthermore, it has no motion controls. Without motion controls, it has more in common with old stereoscopes or viewmasters. These headsets also used an image placed a few inches from the user's head to provide an immersive experience with no movement. The only difference between a Google Cardboard and, and a Viewmaster is the image is now capable of movement. Next, there's high-end VR. Companies such as Facebook and HTC have made these types of headsets. To run higher-end VR, it requires a desktop PC, usually costing thousands of dollars, the headset, cameras, and controllers. These headsets often use a camera or system of cameras to track the user in 3D space and allow them to walk around the virtual world. As you can guess, higher-end VR has a big price tag on it. The headset alone costs about $800, not counting the PC that can be in the thousands and any software you find necessary. After researching lower-end VR for about a month and finding some great apps, I really wanted to get my hands on higher-end VR. But since I did not have thousands of dollars to spend on a VR headset, I needed to call someone. I contacted my uncle, who works for a company called Valve in Seattle, that makes a higher-end VR headset, The Vive, and Steam VR. I begged my parents for weeks to fly to Seattle, and when they finally said yes, I was so excited to get to experience this higher-end VR, well, and visit my aunt uncle. This was a fun experience, not only for me, but my whole family. It really showed me the difference that pr the price makes, providing a more immersive experience with motion controls, allowing the user to interact with the environment, not like they're in VR, but actually living the experience. An example of this is when my dad got to try the headset and was doing a virtual mountain climbing app. When you're looking at a picture at a thousand foot cliff, it's not that scary. But when you're standing there on top of it, about to fall, it can be pretty terrifying. And my dad definitely felt that as he was turning green in the face with fear. I probably should have warned him. He's a little scared of heights. Now that you have an understanding of both higher and lower end VR, I want to have a TEDx alumni come on stage and show, you, oh, and show you what it looks like when someone's in a Google Cardboard. This is Will. He's going to be experiencing ancient Roman VR. And because of the immersive Google Cardboard, he feels like he's there and is able to walk around and look at all the buildings and other things around him. Thank you, Will. Now imagine a student half asleep at their desk in school as a teacher drones on and on about ancient Rome. Blah, 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 blah. Now imagine a classroom in the future. Students all fitted with VR headsets actually experiencing Rome with the 157-foot Col Colosseum and its beautiful surroundings. When using a Google Cardboard, it allows the student to be completely immersed in this experience. Through my research, I found a bunch of great apps such as Jaunt VR, VR, Discovery VR, and many other apps like it. However, VR is not only beneficial in schools. It also is expanding into medical research and training, 
gaming, architecture, touring foreign places and houses, and many more fields. In fields such as, in fields such as medical research and training, it allows, it allows the student to be completely immersed in what they're learning without having to harm a real person, they can learn a procedure. In artwork, it allows for the artist to completely walk around their piece and see it from all different angles. Finally, in touring foreign places and houses, it allows for a person to see a new house or hotel without even being on site. To conclude, this technology is very exciting and in the next few years will allow for students and people to go places and see things they never could before. One of the benefits of VR is that it covers multiple parts of the learning pyramid, allowing for students to not only see and hear what they're learning, but actually interact with it. Now you're probably thinking, the, it sounds like the SEF should just run out right now and buy a bunch of these headsets. <laughs> but I think they should wait a few years. Because like, like any technology, the price will slowly go down of time and the experience will get better. Before I leave, I want to give you my point of view on this. VR is allowing people to have awesome experiences. It'll be really cool in the next few years to see where it goes. I think that's not only beneficial in schools, but it's the way that schools are going to need to learn. Due to my generation being completely surrounded in technology constantly and always having information at our fingertips, we need to be completely immersed in what we are learning or we'll lose focus or just not be interested. In the next few years, virtual reality will change the way that we learn forever.